Welcome to The Last Word. I'm David Jenkins, Mr. Chris Popes, and this is the bare bones edition yes. of The Last Word. We are without our cameraman, so we we love our viewers so much we want yes. to bring them a show. We're to, sacrificing a, a ton of the, 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 the what, your names here. It's Chris, just imagine Chris Popes. A ton of all of them. David Jenkins and then all the graphics and you know all that stuff. Because we love you, the viewer. So this, much. This is just a uh, you know a, a, a an attempt by us to to try to put something out here. So you know don't don't critique us too bad <laughs> on this. But uh, uh, Chris, you know we jump right into it. We had a big so, game the other night. Malden Hay Tie. Uh, all of that. All of it was advertised. I mean, it, it was kind of looked like it may have been a blowout early. Hay Tie really started rolling second half mm-hmm. and came back, and then Malden just did what they had to do to win. You know, Malden's uh, front five really came into play throughout. Basically the whole game, you know. Obviously in that fourth quarter when they needed to drive, uh, they got they got what they needed to do. You know, they they did what they needed to do. Um, I was a little surprised uh, about how effective they were on the ground without even having a shred of a pass, uh, any kind of passing threat whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least they didn't show it. Uh, they, they they completed their one and only pass for twelve yards, and the rest was on the ground. And they did what I mean. Like I said, their their line is. Is definitely their, I think, their biggest advantage, and they definitely use that against uh, kind of an undermanned uh, Haytai team up front. That's right, and, and you know, I, I was, I, I like seeing Haytai come back the way they did. Yeah. You know, they were down and out that first half. They looked, they looked done. Uh, they, they really rallied back that second half, and um, really, I thought outplayed Malden the entire second half. Malden did have the one drive to get to get a score, but I thought the biggest. The biggest drive of the game was in that first drive of the second half for Malden, where uh, Haytai stopped them on the mm-hmm. goal line. Oh yeah, That's that a was huge a huge. Stop. Got them. They they got all the momentum. Had had all the momentum for the entire second half after that, but uh, just couldn't do it. They just just couldn't do it at the end. Malden, uh, yeah, I thought played very well defensively, especially mm-hmm. late, getting some big stops. And uh, but it was. You know, I, I would love to see that game every week. That, that's uh, two good teams, a hard hitting game for for a lot of uh, for a lot of uh, smaller schools. But I mean, that, that was a that was a big game. That's kind of what my my thinking was coming away from that is that these are two kind of a smaller class two school and obviously a class one school that used to be a class two school uh, that that just that had a lot of kids and a lot of big hitters and it, it was it was kind of you know it didn't really represent a lot of small school games we see around here and, and they had a lot of a lot of talent on the field from both teams that was you know what like you said it was as advertised and i was i came away impressed with both teams uh you know we we kind of talk you know go from that game into this week and it, you know hey ty's got another big game they're playing scott city scott city five and one as well uh but not as impressive five and one and they were uh they had it handed to them last week against portageville and uh, I don't think Haytai will have any problem with Scott City. I think Scott City is a weak 5-1. I don't either. Um, after seeing both teams now, I definitely think Haytai will, has the, the clear advantage in that one. Uh, Scott City has just kind of turned into a one-trick pony when earlier in the year they kind of showed that they have, you know, some weapons. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I don't want to harp on them too much because they just <laughs> did get kind of uh, romped by Portersville, but... Uh, I think they need to spread it around a little bit more. I think people are kind of coming on to the fact that Braden Cox is going to get the ball a lot. 40, and... <laughs> 40 carries, 33 carries, and then 39 carries last week in a 49-7 to loss. You know, that's carries. a lot of carries for a young kid. And I, I get it. I, he's very good. Don't get me wrong. He's tough to bring down. But at some point, you kind of got to spread that ball around a little bit because I, I, I'm not there. I'm not at every practice. I'll be the first to say that. I don't know what they have, what they don't. But from what I see, Ty Wilthong is still playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have still have some guys that still playing from earlier in the year. That when I saw them, you know, they have the ability to throw the ball a little bit. And you know, I just I don't you know, I don't get it. I don't I don't, I don't, understand, I don't understand that when it's forty nine seven, you get thirty nine carries. Uh, whoever's calling the plays for them should just have the play sheet taken from them. Uh, that's just absolutely ridiculous. And I don't care who who knows it. it, it I mean, I, I, it's just ridiculous. And that's what whatever they want to do is fine with me. But you know that that's that's just um, you know. I, I I don't I don't see it. It's not it's not you know like I said I think teams are definitely caught on to Braden Cox yeah. can get the ball and they're just keen on him and that's just, just kind of one of those things and you know Portersville did I think Portersville beforehand said you know what hey I got a guy we got a guy spying on the, him he's going to follow him all game and that's what he did and it yeah. seemed it but obviously it seemed to work well it's, it's pretty easy to do another big game though Jackson Cape Central yes uh, that, the, the rivalry game up there you can throw the records out the window uh 
Uh, two teams that just uh, they they don't like each other. Nope. Uh, Cape Central's got a lot of those teams, if you notice. <laughs> they, uh, but uh, they, uh, you know, they just two good teams. But I think Jackson is, is clearly the better team this year. I, you know, that doesn't mean they're going to win the game because you know we've seen the better team in this game lose more than more than once. Absolutely. But um, I, I think Jackson goes in there and at Cape Central and gets a win. But uh, you know it, it'll be close because it's always close. Already claimed a Seymour North Conference title. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's off their back. They won't have to worry about that anymore. I think it's going to be smooth sailing for the Indians and going in and. and you know, it's, it's at Cape Central this year, I believe. Yes. That's right. Uh, yeah, if I look at my notes, it's at Cape Central. But anyway, you know, Cape Central, they're, I th- you know, I think they're, 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 they have the capability of winning this game. I just don't think they will. You know, Jackson, is, they're, they seem to roll. Uh, they they got a, I think they got a pretty decent win over Papa Bluff. You know, it's fairly close for most of the game until late. Uh, but, you know, Jackson has kind of came out of the gate and said, hey, here, you know, we're proud of the top team in in Southeast Missouri right now. Uh, still hanging around the top ten, and as far as the media polls. But when you look at this game, you got Cooper Callis, who I think is uh, he's I think he's got enough weapons to do what he needs to do against Cape Central. Yeah, that's, I, I agree. Cape Central's got some great athletes. They do. They, they do have some great athletes. I don't know. They just can't get them the ball always, yeah. and, I, and that's that, that's a problem. And Jackson is, with the exception of one game this year, Jackson's played pretty well mm-hmm. defensively. I think so. Uh, you know, uh, you know. I think Jackson wins this game. Just too much offense for for Cape Central. I don't think they can muster enough to 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 get the win. I hear you. And then you got uh, another uh, s- kind of Seymour North battle. It doesn't mean anything for the conference, but hey, it's a big game for the for these two. It's kind of a rivalry game a little bit. Uh, Papa Bluff comes to Sykeson, and Sykeson has struggled uh, to move the ball to score mm-hmm. points last week. And that was just all because Justice Faulkner is still out mm-hmm. and they, we've kind of seen what happens when they have their starting running back, not able to play. Yeah. Justice being out, um, and he should probably, will, will probably miss this week from yeah. what I understand. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, tough call for Sykeson. They didn't have a great offense to begin with. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dre Johnson, uh, their quarterback is, you know, he actually had a pretty decent yeah. week last week, but, uh, there's just only so much you can do. They're not a passing offense. They need it. They need that running back who can kind of break it, you know, break away. And without justice, they don't have that. Um, I, I don't know if Sykeson can score enough to win this one. I, I I think that Popper Bluff, you know, Sykeson will defend them well. Even though Popper Bluff likes to throw the ball with 522 yards. 522 last week. yards last week from uh, it was a Faust, I believe is his name. Uh, from, from that's and that's Popper Sykeson's Bluff. kryptonite from week to week yeah. is that. Is, is is the passing game is stopping the passing game, but you know they they always seem to come to play against Popper Bluff. It's always seems to be a, a close game that yeah. goes down to the wire. But I, I think I think Popper Bluff pulls this one out because I don't think Sykeson has enough defense or uh, excuse me enough offense. I'm with you. And, and the last few years it's kind of been that way for the Bulldogs as far as like you know they can kind of defense can keep them in games, but they just haven't had enough to to outscore their opponent, and they just they haven't found. I, I, I think they have the right offense. I do to kind of fit their kids, but it's just you know you lose your run, starting running back, who's turned out to be pretty decent weapon for right. him uh, over the last few games. But you lose him, and just kind of mojo kind of goes out of the window. Right. Um, you know, we go from the Seymour North to the Seymour West. I think it is with Kenneth and Dexter. <laughs> is it North, Southeast? West. I'm not sure. It's one of them. It's four. One of them. It used to be so much simpler. There's three. Now there's four. We got you know. Yeah. So it, and, and it's all confusing. <laughs> I, I grew up with the you know whatever. Uh, but we got Kenneth and Dexter, and and being a Dexter guy, mm-hmm. this is a game. I mean, Dexter has owned this. They've won yes. the last sixteen. That's over. I, I think Kenneth Dexter. You know, we talk about struggling to stop the pass. Dexter. Struggles to stop the pass. They actually defend the run fairly well, yeah. but they uh, Kenneth doesn't run the ball. Kenneth Kenneth's strength is throwing the ball. Dexter's weakness is defending the pass. Dexter really can't score. Uh, their their offense is just really weak right now. Uh, I think Kenneth wins this one and finally breaks that streak. I'm making this a one score game just because of the respect that I have for Dexter's winning streak over Kenneth these mm-hmm. last 16 times. I think uh, it's just maybe something about them. It's Kenneth. You know, they just go in and think, hey, we're supposed to win this game, and they do. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year, they had a guy by the name of Ethan Stevens who could do whatever he wanted to on the field, yeah, and, and, and he, he did him, in that game. And he led, yes, he led them to to victory in that one. And I'm like you, I, I, Kenneth should stop the streak this week. Well, let's uh, let's hit some other games real quick. Uh, we have Malden at Charleston. Uh, I think Malden, you know, Char- Charleston had a big game last week against Kelly, but I think I think Malden rolls in this one though. Uh, goes to seven and zero, and that'll be uh, that'll be another conference championship for uh, Malden, their third will, in a row. That will seal the conference for them. Uh, yeah, Charleston. That's a, that's a good win against Kelly, but 
you know, we have we have Kelly uh, in their game against New Madrid County Central two, hosting New Madrid County Central. Two, two winless, winless teams. teams. Something has to break. Guys, somebody's coming break. out of there with a win. I think it's going to be New Madrid. I said it last week. I'll say it again this week. Kelly is going to score. I think Kelly scores twice. You know, they didn't score against Charleston. And nothing against Charleston, but, you know, they, they've kind of been down and out in the last few years. They didn't score against Charleston. I hate to say it, but I don't think they're going to score against New Madrid. But I, I hey, think they score twice. You I, first. I, 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 you know how I think that's – it's just, it would be huge for them. Because I think just the season they had, just to score once would be a big... I know they want to win the game, and I know that's not what they're looking for, just to score, but just to get some kind of positivity in that team would be Yeah, great. I think New Matter just struggles stopping anybody, they really. Do. And, um, you know, I think New Matter... New Matter's got a good offense. They, I mean, they, yeah. they can throw the ball. Yeah. They, they look really good throwing the ball, but they just, their defense, they really struggle. Um, I think Kelly scores twice. I really do. I think they I think they come through and score. Another big game that uh, I think is, a, is probably the biggest toss-up of the week because Portersville East Prairie. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, Portersville East Prairie, they come in the last few – I mean, they've traded wins, mm-hmm. uh, met each other, I think, last year in the district, uh, t- district tournament game. East Prairie, I think, won that – maybe that's two years. I, I, I'm horrible at remembering things. But anyway, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been a back-and-forth uh, matchup between these two, and I think just Portersville just might have just too much offense, and East Prairie might struggle stopping that. I think Portersville – Simple, simple terms, Portersville scores more than East Prairie can score. Right. I, I think East Prairie play, started off the season playing pretty good defense, but I think they've had some injuries mm-hmm. there. They, their defense just isn't what it was. And Portersville last week found a running game. Yeah. And if Portersville can run and throw, it opens it opens a pass up more. It makes it tougher to defend. Even though East Prairie has Deverance Jones and Dres Tipler, I think Portersville pulls this one out. I think it's a close one. I think it goes down the wire, but I think Portersville wins it in the end. I'm with you. I got Portersville by just – just under two touchdowns. All right, we have Chaffee against Principia. Um, I don't know much about Principia, except they haven't won yet, so I'm going to go with Chaffee. That's all I know. Chaffee, uh, they hung with East Prairie last week. You know, they, they kind of, they, they did, and I, I didn't really expect that. Uh, I thought East Prairie would be just a little bit too much for them, but kind of made it a game at the end, and I'm going with Chaffee to uh, get their third win of the year. And we have a couple of games up north. St. Vincent against St. Pius the 10th. <laughs> What's uh, the tone? I heard the tone. Yeah, the tone. Yeah, we got a couple of games up I north. mean, St. Vincent, St. Vincent's going to... They should roll in this yes. game and take care of St. Pius. But the other game is St. Genevieve at Perryville. And Perryville is just not very good this year. So we're going to go with St. Genevieve, I'm assuming. Going with the Saints. Mm-hmm. Going with the Saints. Uh, we out, And our last one, we have Crothersville hosting Cuba. Uh, Cuba, they're uh, going to be there. They're going to uh, stop playing some baseball for the yeah. day and come in. and uh, They have uh, victory cigars after. You know, mm-hmm. that might be illegal, but we're still going to do that. Um, I think it's legal now. I think it's legal. Is think, it? Yeah, they really? can bring those cigars in legally now. So, yeah, but, I, live, I live in the past. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I think Crowsville rolls. I mean, I mean, Cuba, they're baseball players there. They don't, they don't, they don't do much with football, so... <laughs> The Cuba Missouri football team. Oh, Cuba Missouri! I got you. Okay. Comes in with a one and four record. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon game. Crowsville, I think, uh, kind of handles them. Yeah, yeah I think that as well. And a bonus game. Bonus. Bonus game. Valley Catholic takes yes. down Lamar yes. on Saturday. A uh, big game. Oh, Valley Catholic takes down Lamar on takes Saturday. Takes down Lamar, twenty-seven, twenty-four. Yeah, I'm. We're making the trip up. Uh, we're excited to kind of see that's a t- uh, top ranked teams in class one and two as far as the media. Uh, football rankings are concerned, and it, I think that's a huge matchup. I don't. I think a lot of people think Valley is uh, the uh, the underdog in this one. That, that people think that Lamar's just going to come in and roll. You seem to have a different idea. I, I don't see. I'm. With, I think Valley wins it. I, you know, Valley's playing at home. They're going to have the majority of the crowd on their side. Although uh, Lamar will bring a huge yes, crowd because they always do. But uh, that place is going to be packed. Uh, but it's. Uh, I, I think Valley wins it. You know, Valley's got the longest winning streak in the nation, yeah. and they don't. I mean, they, they play a good a good schedule. I mean, it's not. I mean, they don't really shy away. They play a lot of smaller schools. Yeah. But uh, you know, they, they usually play one or two really good teams during the course of the year, and and, and usually win. So. Yeah, I. I think if I think they'll hold they hang close. They're not going to get blown out. They're not going to get turbo clocked. Uh, but I think Lamar is just going to be a little bit too much to for them. I, I, they don't they don't play anything like Lamar during the regular season. Mm-hmm. Not, not nothing compared to them at all. Um, and after seeing, and I know it's last year, but uh, I saw what Lamar brings to the table and their kind of scheme and whatever have you. Mm-hmm. 
I just think it's going to be a little bit too much. It's not going to be a blowout by any means, I don't think. The Valley's going to hold their own for sure. The Bar's only let one team score against them this year. Uh, yeah. The Valley will definitely score, and I and I do. I, I think Valley wins it. I think uh, I think they're going to surprise some people. I really do. I think Valley's better. Valley, Valley's going to, for a change, is going to have a chip on their shoulder coming yeah. into a game. Normally, they're the ones that, you know, everybody's after them. This time they they can you know they're not the favorite and yeah. I, and I think they're going to relish in that role. They do not play the underdog role very very much mm-hmm. and we'll see how they respond to that. But uh, anyway, as we close out our show on our new uh, kind of ending the show on our uh, uh, the last word notes, uh, here's David Jenkins with his uh, last word for the week. Something I've seen a lot lately is, uh, you know, and it's not just one specific team, but it's several teams. It, it, it just the when something doesn't go their way, the they hang their heads, players hang their heads, walk off the field. They're not, uh, you know, it's like they're it's like they're defeated. Uh, you know, just when one little thing goes wrong, if the other team scores a touchdown on them or something, or maybe they get burned on a, uh, is, you know, maybe they're playing cornerback and get burned or something of that nature. Or they drop a pass. You know, they come back to the sideline, they walk, they take their helmet off, and they cuss and. Uh, it's just not. It's just not what you want to see on the sidelines. I, I want to see. You know, it, it's fine to get mad and get upset for not having a. Uh, you know, for making a bad play or something. I completely understand that. But when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes down to, uh, uh, you know, making a play, um, you know, you, I think you need to have some confidence in yourself and not just automatically be defeated when something just goes your. You know, goes against you and and a lot of the body language and stuff that the players have nowadays is just. You know, it may have been that way for a long time, but it, you know, it's just I've just really noticed it as, as of late that just if one little thing goes wrong, it's just like, oh, well, I'm done. I, you know, I can't do this anymore. And they, you know, we cuss and and we throw our helmets and we just sit on the pat on the sidelines. And and I don't know what that is, what's the cause of that, but uh, I th- I think that, uh, we, that you know players need to realize that things are going to go wrong, not just on the field, but in life in general. And you have to uh, you know rebound from that. And it, it's 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 how you handle adversity that is the kind of person you are. So. You know, if you're a player that's watching this, you know, if something goes wrong, just, you know, keep your head up and go out and and try to do better the next time and learn from your mistakes. Chris? That's a great last word. Well, thank you. That's a great last word. It's a good lesson. Uh, We see that all too often nowadays, and it's, Mm -hmm. you know. It is, but anyway. All right. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this kind of put-together edition of The Last Word. I kind of like it. Kind of got a, you know. I don't know. No, it's, it's, well, got a, it's got a tape together feel. Got, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hopefully this comes out okay and you guys uh, have no problems viewing it. And uh, so we'll see you next week. Charlie will be back. We'll have Thank hopefully you. all of our frills Goodness. and everything back with us. Yes. And uh, so we'll see you guys next week on The Last Word. <laughs>